Hello everyone, this is Reza. Welcome to another video of FX series in Maya. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a flock of birds in Maya. Now, we're going to animate this simple model first. Then we're going to create a particle object. We're going to generate our particle instancer. We're going to produce our goal object and attach our goal object to a motion path. And to apply final touches, we are going to randomize bird's size and the movements using simple expressions and a simple force field. Now I have a simple model in here since this object is going to be in the background and possibly we are going to have motion blur on it with other birds in the sky. I really didn't want to spend time modeling or rigging this bird. Instead, I'm going to use a very neat and clean deformer to animate this bird. So let's see where we can find this deformer. I will go into modeling, go to deform and then go to nonlinear and bend. Uh, right off the bat, I noticed that my uh, bend handle is oriented incorrectly. So I'm just going to rotate it in 90 in Z and rotate it 90 in X. Now, if I look at the input bend attribute, you can see the envelope is on, so our bend is working. Now, I have this curvature attribute. If I select this attribute with my middle mouse drag to left and right, we can see I can easily animate this bird using one single attribute. Now, I can go ahead and keyframe it and cycle the animation, or I can just write a very simple expression to loop the animation. So with the attribute selected, I'm going to control a right click and open my expression window. What I can say is I want to bring this bend dot curvature with my middle mouse button. And I want to say to Maya that I want to create a sinus curve. And I want that sinus curve to be animated over time with the intensity of maybe five. We will see, we may change this and how much curvature value I want to assign to this. I'm going to push this to something like 60. So it goes to minus 60 plus 60. So if I go create, well, not too bad. It's a bit slow still. And I think I can push the curvature attribute to a higher value. So I'm just going to bump this up to something like 80 and this one to 100. Yes, that's uh, much better. Remember, we are going to have a look at this bird from a distance. So from probably here. Yeah, that looks convincing enough. Now, I don't want to use the actual geometry with bend handle on it for my particle simulation. Instead, I would like to create snapshot of this animation and use that to feed to my particle instancer. Now, how can we do that? I need to go into animation with my model selected, I need to count how many frames I have for this animation. So frame one to frame 10, simply because frame 11 and frame one are the same. So with that in mind, and with the model selected, I'm going to go to visualize, create animation snapshot, and set my start frame to one, set my end frame to 10, and go snapshot. Now Maya gives me a geometry per frame and I picked 10 frames. So I technically should have 10 models here. Fantastic. Now I don't need my animated bird anymore. I can either discard it or even better, I can press hedge on it to hide it. Now I'm going to use this as my particle instancer. 
Now, speaking of which, let's get to the particle system first, get that produced so we can attach each bird to each particle. I'm just going to hide bird geometries and then I go to effects and particles and I don't want to create emitter because I don't want to constantly generate birds unless you want to go ahead and keyframe the rate too much work so I'm going to go to end particle tool option box number of particles think of this as number of birds I'm just going to go and get 20 of them and how far apart is the radius probably start with something like 15 and we'll see how we go I may change this later I'm just going to click on the scene close the window and press enter and that's going to be my birds I think they're a bit too wide but I'm not going to change anything for now I'm going to hide the grid let's work with what we have and see how we go I'm just going to bring my birds back and I'm going to select the content of my snapshot group node I'm going to go to end particle instancer and its option box. Now I need to make sure that I have all the objects here and then name of my particle goes in there so Maya knows which particle system it will target. It's not going to pick it by default. I need to set my cycle to sequence and make sure that my cycle step unit is set to frame and I just go create. Now I can just go ahead and hide my birds. You can select the particle and increase its size to something like four or maybe three. So the distance between each bird is more realistic. Now if I press play, we can see they're animating. Well, they're dropping down because of that nucleus node and its gravity. So I'm going to select nucleus node, go to its attribute editor and turn off the gravity. That was a quick fix. I'm going to rewind and play again. Of course, they're all flap at the same time. They have the same size. We are going to fix that soon. But first things first, I need to create a path for the birds using a simple object and then get the birds to get attracted to that object randomize the pattern and we take it from there all right with that I'm just gonna deselect go back to modeling menu set create and let's create a simple path using CV curve tool Again, there is no right or wrong here. It's just a, a preference and how you want the birds to move in the sky. Um, but for now, I think the pattern looks okay. You can even take it to the next level and rebuild the curve using equal distance in between each CVs. I'm not going to bother with that. I think it's a bit of an overkill. So let's go ahead and create a sphere. I'm going to scale that sphere. around this value with the sphere selected I'm going to select the path I have 400 frames which I think will work for me I'm gonna to go to animation under constrain and I'm gonna attach the sphere to the path so if I animate perfect I have the animation ready now eventually I'm going to hide the sphere but for now I want the birds to follow the sphere. The way we do that is through goals in particle system. So I select my particle, select my sphere, go to effects, 
and particle and goal. Now the default value um, is the amount of attraction and it's set to 0.5. If you set it to one, you don't even see the transition. The particles are gonna snap to each point or each vertex. 0.5 gives it a bit of a delay. I even want to create more delay. So constantly birds are trying to catch up to each point. So maybe um, a number of two, 0.275, let's start with that and see what we get. Now, if I zoom back a little and hopefully you guys can see, I might even go to wireframe and play. You can see birds are trying to catch up. They do catch up at some point and they try to snap themselves to each point and that is a type of pattern I don't want. So if I go and select the particles, which now they're birds, you can see they try to attach themselves to each point, which is not a good look and I want to break that up. Right at the beginning they look good, but eventually over time they try to attach themselves. Also, the goal itself still looks a bit too high. So I'm going to select the particle, go to goal weight and reduce this to something like 0.225 instead. And then I'm going to go to attribute editor and particle shape node. And I'm going to use per particle rollout, which is a very useful rollout. In here, you can create new attributes to change the behavior of your particle. And that's exactly what we need to do. I'm going to go to general. I'm going to pick from the existing list. You can always go to new and create a new attribute. I'm going to go to the existing one and just pick my gold U and gold V and add it to the mix. Now they're here. What I want to do, I want to break up that point to vertex relationship and get these birds to pick a random vertex instead. Because right now they're all picking one edge loop and they're trying to snap themselves to that edge loop. That part needs to change. So with the particle selected, I'm just going to go and right click on goal V or goal U, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to create an expression. I'm going to select and particle shape dot gold V middle mouse, drag it to the expression area. And I'm just going to simply say that I want to create a little bit of randomness from zero to one. And I'm going to do the same thing for gold U. And remember that UV is the actual UV of the particles, horizontal and vertical dimensions, and create. Now, before I play, I noticed that the birds are not looking ahead or towards the path. They're actually spinning around. And that's because if I go to particle instancer tab, we haven't had a chance to give them a sense of direction. So I want these particles to always look front or at least follow the velocity of the particles. So that's better. Now birds are always looking front, not spinning around or flying backwards, which is a bit odd. I'm just going to hide the sphere and probably hide the curve and I'm going to select the particles and while I'm in effects I'm gonna go and add a turbulence node that helps us to create more randomness no attenuation probably magnitude of 10 will do just fine and I'm gonna go and create 
Now if I play, we definitely see a huge improvement. Now to change the size of these birds, I need to go back to my end particle shape node under per particle array rollout and create a brand new attribute. I'm going to go to generate and this time I would like to generate a vector and call this random scale or whatever, whatever name you have in mind with vector selected, I'm going to go and press OK. Now, ran scale gets created here. Now I can right click and add an expression to it. Now, we need to kind of be careful about how we assign randomize to this because we cannot give this only one randomized value. If you remember, for scale, we deal with three separate axes x y z and because of that we need three types of randomizations one for x one for y and one for z and preferably we want all three of them to be identical otherwise we will experience skewing or odd deformation on our birds so i'm just going to give this a randomization from 0 0.75 to 1 and I'm going to repeat that three times one for x one for y one for z and I'm going to use these double brackets because uh, for vector value we use these double brackets and remember for our attributes we picked vector as attribute type and I go OK, close. Now, if I were to play this, we really don't see the change in scale. And that's odd because, well, we've already addressed the randomization here and we defined that random scale, but we didn't let Maya know about random scale and we didn't connect that to our instancer. So let's do that. That's actually very straightforward. I go to my instancer rollout and in scale I'm gonna say pick that random scale that I asked instead and instantly we see a change in scale. So as you can see if I were to pick only two birds we see that this guy is much smaller than this guy. Now, if you want that effect to be subtle, then you can go easily and change the expression. And when you rewind, it will update itself. Also, while I'm here, let's have a look at the motion. Yeah, I definitely need to reduce the gold weight as well. So I'm just going to go into channel box and set this to 0.175. Magnitude of my turbulence, I'm going to increase that to something like 35 and see what we're getting. Yeah. That is much better. I may even go ahead and reduce the goal weight furthermore. So with the particle selected, I can just go in here and reduce my goal weight to something like 0.1. Now let's have a look now. Yes, that the movement and the pace is um, much better, more realistic now. I like that. Okay. 
you can add further tweaks by randomizing the magnitude for your turbulence as well. So I can just say randomize it somewhere between 10 and 300. And you can see the value keeps changing and randomizes the pattern of the birds a little. Definitely an improvement. Now it's time to add a sky dome, add a few lights and get the whole thing rendered. And we'll be back, have a look at the result. All right, my render is done and here's the result. Thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to change any of these attributes and tailor it to your own brief or project and hope to see you guys in the next one.